The Lord be with you. And also with you. We have come to his house to glorify God, to give him thanks and praise, and to acknowledge that he is supreme. And that we are called to do what He has called us to do. And so, in this act of worship, may we reflect on who we are, whose we are, and may we seek to leave here to do as God has called. Amen. The opening hymn, number 364. Come, Christian, join the sing. Alleluia.
things that raise the spirit the unity of the Holy Spirit, one in all, now and forever. Amen. Please sit for the reading. A reading from the Word of God. A reading from the Word of God written in the prophet of Isaiah, chapter 6, beginning at verse 1. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lofty, and the hem of his robe filled the temple. Seraphs were in attendance above him. Each had six wings. With two, they covered their faces, and with two, they covered their feet, and with two, they flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. The pivots on the thresholds shook at the voice of those who called, and the house filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me, I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphs flew to me, holding a live coal that had been taken from the altar with a pair of tongues. The seraph touched my mouth with it and said, Now that this has touched your lips, your guilt has departed and your sin is blotted out. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? And who will go for us? And I said, Here I am. Send me the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm appointed is Psalm 138, found on page 653 of the Book of Common Prayer. You will read Psalm 4, verse 4 and 9, and at the end, instead of the glory, we will say, When I call, you answer me, you increase my strength within me. I will give thanks to you, O Lord, with my whole heart. Before the gods, I will sing your praise. I will bow down towards your holy temple and praise your name, because of your love and faithfulness. For you have glorified your name, your word above all things. When, when I call, you answer me. All the kings of the world will praise you, O Lord, when they have heard the word of your mouth. I will sing of the ways of the Lord. That great is the glory of the Lord. Though the Lord be high, he cares for the lowly. He preserves the haughty from afar. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you keep me safe. You stretch forth your hand against the fury of my enemies, and the right hand shall save me. The Lord will make good his purpose for me. O Lord, your love endures forever. Do not abandon the works of their hands. When I call, you answer me. You increase my strength within me.
a reading from the Word of God written in the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians chapter 15 beginning at verse 1. Now I would remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that I proclaim to you, which you in turn receive, in which you also stand, through which also you are being saved, if you hold firmly to the message that I proclaim to you, unless you have come to believe in vain. For I handed unto you, as of first importance, what I in turn have received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve. Then he appeared to more than five hundred brothers and sisters at one time, most of whom have st are still alive, though some have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me. For I am the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace towards me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I work harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we proclaim and so we have come to believe the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Bible, number 393. Great God, bread of Christ. Dear Lord, amen.
The Lord be with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke, chapter 5, beginning at the first verse. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke, chapter 5, beginning at the first verse. Glory to Christ our Savior. Once, while Jesus was standing beside the lake of Genazareth, and the crowd was pressing in on him to hear the word of God, he saw two boats. There at the shore of the lake, the fishermen had gone out of them and were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out a little way from the shore. Then he sat down and taught the crowds from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, Put out into the deep water and let down your nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we have worked all night long but have caught nothing. Yet, if you say so, I will let down the nets. When they had done this, they caught so many fish that their nets were beginning to break. So they signaled their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And when they came and filled both boats, so they began to sink. But when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees and said, Go away from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. For he and all who were with him were amazed at the catch of fish that they had taken. And so also were James and John, sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. Then Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on, you will be catching people. When they had brought their boats to shore, they left everything and followed him. The Gospel of Christ. Praise Christ.
became a ten-point sermon. And then I said, I couldn't say all of those things. Not only that, I had another church to go to, so a 45-minute sermon wouldn't make sense. And we have other things to take up the time in church this morning, too. So if it appears a little choppy, just fill in the details. Amen. I have given much food for thought. Remember when? It's oftentimes the start of a conversation between old friends. And you know, as I wrote that, I remember a calypso my mother used to sing that says, I think I'm going to sing it for you. Remember when you couldn't even talk? Remember when you couldn't even walk? Y'all old enough to know that kind of stuff? Yeah. Oh, but you can't be old enough because you're all my age and I didn't know it. My mother sang it. In our second lesson today, however, from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, Paul calls us back to remember. Paul says, remember what is important. Remember who is important and remember why we do what we do. I remind you that Paul writes to a divided community. One where members are quarreling amongst themselves who is more superior and who has superior gifts. Paul says to them, if they don't have love, nothing else matters. Today, Paul reminds them and us that what is important is the good news of Jesus Christ, his life, his death, and resurrection. There would be no good news if Jesus didn't come. We would not have heard the news if the disciples had kept it to themselves and not told anybody. Amen. Paul reminds us that Jesus calls us into obedience to him with the good news of the kingdom. And it is our job to tell others. Yes. Paul recounts for us his call. And while he thought he worked harder than the other apostles, he felt himself unworthy because he had persecuted the others. In the first reading, Isaiah is being called and he too feels unworthy because of his unclean lips. These were made clean so that he was able to prophesy the coming of Jesus. In the gospel, we see the call of Peter, James, and John. G Peter also declares that he is unworthy to be in the presence of Jesus. Despite that, Jesus calls them to follow. I too am reminded that I felt insufficient. And I suppose many of us do. But we are here this morning being invited to bring to mind our own call experiences. Do you remember the first time you were conscious of who Jesus was? Of who he is supposed to be in your life? We, like the apostles, 
are called to be part of a community of Jesus, to be people of the way as Christians were first called, irrespective of our own sense of unworthiness or inadequacies, we are not called to be individual worshippers. Everybody Jesus called in the Bible was called to minister to others, to serve. Paul was the apostle to the Gentiles and the 12 disciples first ministered to their own people and then to all nations. They knew what they were called to do. Do you recall when you were brought to faith? When you acknowledged that you were going to follow in the way of Jesus? How did that feel? What went through your body and your mind? What were you being called to do? Are you doing it? Do you think that you have answered the call? Or do you think that you have no special call on your life? That Jesus meant for you to be just one of the crowd, bench warmers. I think not. All the people whose lives Jesus touched told others and called them to experience Jesus. The next question, therefore, is. Are you doing what you are called to do or are you resisting? Is there more that you should be doing? The gospel of Jesus is a social one. We read Luke chapter 4 verse 18 about two weeks ago where Jesus took up the scroll of Isaiah and read that he came to free persons from poverty and various kinds of oppression. In Matthew we read that on Judgment Day we will have to give account of how we treat our neighbors, whether we gave them food, clothes and water or visited them in prison. John tells us God so loved the world that he sent Jesus to save people from the hard times they were going through. We thus understand that while the call to be Christian is individual, the life of the Christian is not personal. It is about community. And it is no accident that the breaking of bread and eating with Jesus at the Holy Eucharist is referred to as communion. Jesus' ministry was social. It was community-oriented and sought to improve the lives of people. And if we look back through the stories of the gospel, we will see this. Jesus came to transform the world. And that is what we are all called to do. Khalil Kyle, Mikhail, 
the other youngsters in church. We are all called to transform the life of people and we are never too young to start. We are to make the lives of people better. Today and this month, we admit, admit our commission, depending on your choice of word, or church committees. And we are reminded that we are all called to do the work of Jesus. We have each accepted the call to serve and thus must serve to the best of our ability. Jesus has no hands or feet except for ours. For the church committee, it means attending meetings and making decisions on behalf of and in the best interest of the congregation. But it also means being good examples of the social ministry of Jesus. It means leading people in following Christ. And that won't mean going outside the kick crusade. But it means living a life that represents Jesus. I sing out the church committee because of what is happening today. But following Christ in his social ministry is not only their jobs. There are several ways, several ministries, we call them vocations sometimes, that we are all being called to. And it don't matter our age. We are being drawn as Christians to do for Christ. And each of us have been given the wherewithal to do something to improve the life of others. To coalesce, as it were, like droplets of water in a particular area to make people's lives better. There is enough work for all of us. We don't have to step on each other's toes. And I'm certain that you have thought of things that we should be doing. And when God speaks, he tells other people the very same thing. So there's a ministry we haven't started that God is calling some of us to do. Jesus is calling you to start it. What are you waiting for? I can't know what Jesus is telling you to do. You have to share it with me and with others. Our reactions to our call may be different. In my own acceptance of Jesus Christ as a teenager, I was too shy to tell anybody where I thought Jesus was leading me. I waited a long time before seriously answering the call. Your call may not be mine, but friends, I invite you to seriously consider the vocations of the church and in particular the ordained ministry. To consider nurturing two or three persons and to see where it goes, what God is saying to them. Yes, sister, I can be small, but God looks after us Amen. through the generosity of the members of the congregation. And what I'm saying is, you won't starve nor suffer in any way. Maybe a little uncomfortable, but guess what? Life uncomfortable anyway. Life uncomfortable anyway, you take it. All when you have plenty of money, life's still uncomfortable because there are things that money can buy, can't buy that 
Señor. Remember Elijah, so Elijah there was the widow with oil and flour. God provides. Amen. And you know because God provides for you too and you recognize that and if you are not recognizing it, friends, it means that you are not focusing on God. As a congregation, we need to pray that persons will answer the call to ordain ministry and prefer the full-time ministry so God's people can know more about God. Further, I would like us to consider that everything we do is ministry. Everything we do is worship. Everything we do is to the honor and glory of God. The work we do that pays us, we should treat with reverence and respect. Through it, we are worshiping God. Through how we behave in the workplace, others are understanding what it means to be Christian. So I beg you, don't let them decide when you're at work. Don't cause people to say, then a Shia Christian, then a Hima Christian. There's a story. of a pastor who went to an office to speak to his lay preacher and the person, you know, God is a gatekeeper. The person asked, who can I say? And he said, the pastor said, telling his pastor and the person stood. This is true, and would need to move. Because the person was stunned. And after that, the man was shunned because the workplace community couldn't believe that he was really a Christian in the way he behaved, the way he treated others, and the things he did that were so unchristian. When I look around me in the church, there is an inability to find people to serve. Look at our choir. Look at the ease with which we choose to stay home. There is a level of apathy, a level of donkia that has crept from our society into our church. We come to church, we give our little much. Not, not even the little much. Be grateful and plenty times it is all that we have. I want to see our church well kept. But there are many things we don't care about. We don't care about the person who sits in the next bench. We don't even want to know their names. When somebody asks, I had that experience recently. Who is so and so? They're referring it to somebody else and is a member of their church. When we ask people how they do, very often it's how you do. We don't stop to hear how they are. And they have learned that 
people really are not interested. So they don't say, they just say, have fun. Or, you know, when you play here or there, or some, something like that. No meaningful conversation takes place between us as brothers and sisters. And then no, because we surprise it. We don't want to tell anybody what is going on with us for fear them to tell the people who we don't like or who we think don't like us. Friends, we have to be like our and understand what church is all about. People come to church, we don't welcome them. Yes, we are polite, but politeness is not what you are called to. You're called to love people. So you're supposed to go over and actually kill them with the love. We don't engage each other to show that we genuinely care for people. And maybe we have not learned how to genuinely care for people. But we need to start now, no matter how old you be. It's never too late to learn. All dogs can learn new tricks. It just may take them a little longer because the bones not so supple again. When we come to church, we, at the end of the service, we say hello to our friends and we turn to you back to us. Do you know who opens the church windows? Do we know who closes the church windows? It doesn't matter, Leanne would say. It doesn't matter, Brenda, but it does. Because nobody in here is paid to do it. And many of us sit beside windows. So we can just turn around and close one as a gesture of, I care about my church. And I don't want anybody to think that I'm being rude or facetious or any of those kinds of words. You see, we come to church this morning and we didn't come thinky, thinky, you know, because when the service started, it's so thinky, thinky. And you see, when I, I said I had to repeat the gospel, yes. Because many times we come here, we're just going through the motions. And that is part of the reason why we have an order, a liturgy. We're not supposed to learn the things by heart, you know. Every time we come and say it, we must say it with meaning. And plenty of times people come to church and then say, I don't get nothing this morning. You know why? You brought nothing. You brought nothing. You came here to be entertained for somebody to tell you something that makes you feel good so you can go back home. We, friends, are going through the motions. And that is what causes the apathy, the dumb here. And we have to recognize that this is what is happening to us and change it. We have to stop and we have to do better. We have to listen to the word of God in a manner that it changes us 
and motivates us to tell others about neighborliness. I heard about a church that acknowledged that it lacked music. And when the budget was being made up and people said, well, we need to put so much money down for music, the person who in charge, you know, some churches have people who in charge of it, right? Yeah. And when they speak, no doubt about it. You know that? Yeah. That is one of those churches. And the big dog said, Remember, we have to keep expenses low. This is the same big dog who wanted the pastor to go on keep crusade to bring people into church. And he has not thought about the fact that when the people come to church and they don't have no music, they're not coming back. Because when church fake fake people don't engage. Notice I didn't say enjoy. People don't engage. In our church and in our society, there are so many needs to be fulfilled. Life was always difficult and COVID has made it even harder. And I ask us, what are we doing as church to alleviate the suffering in our society? Then there is the outreach to the needy. Do you know if we hear a technology of our ministry for that? Do you participate in it? Can you give a few things of mackerel if there is one? Some last or some cornmeal to help the poor families that I am hoping that we support because I don't know that you know that we have a ministry, so. Or is it okay to just put a little, give our regular offering and leave it as that? Give our free gift, pay our tithes, whatever you want to call it. And Drop something in the collection plate when we have extra, and that is that. I'm just asking if you're taking an interest in what is happening around us. While we can always improve on what we do, I'm not suggesting that what is being done is not appreciated or that it's less than optimum. I'm just saying that we shouldn't be going through the motions. Whatever we do should be deliberate. We should live life to the fullest, participating in all things to the best of our ability. We should make our lives meaningful. Meaningful so that others too can find meaning, not just the members of your family. It's what Jesus did. And it's what we are all called to do. I have asked a 
a lot of Christians. And I have given much food for thought if you have listened. So in closing, my challenge to you is Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. The message puts it this way. I quit being a lawman so that I could be God's man. Christ's life showed me how and enabled me to do it. I identified myself completely with him. Indeed, I have been crucified with Christ. My ego is no longer central. It is no longer important that I appear righteous before you or have your good opinion. And I'm no longer driven to impress God. Christ lives in me. The life you see me living is not mine, but it is lived by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. I am not going back on that. As the other versions say, it is no longer I who live, but it is Christ who lives in me. And I'd like for you to say it with me, please. Let me repeat it one more time. It is no longer I who live, but it is Christ who lives in me. Together, it, it is, is no longer I who live, but it is Christ who lives in me. Again, it is no longer I who live, but it is Christ who lives in me. So let us challenge ourselves each day to remember to be Christ-like in all we do. To forget about ourselves and reflect Christ in all things and at all times. To live a life of meaning, engaging others, our neighbors. Amen. Amen. I invite the church community to come forward, please, for their commissioning. You all have a piece of paper, where it is. When I don't leave it, it's a card, please bring mine. I don't know who you are, face that man for a It's balls in a point to take, so you're going to think it, it makes a difference if you look at them. You all know these people? Yes. You know their names? Yes. Let me introduce them to you before we do this. This is Mr. Edison Hines. Right? He's a rector's ward. Any trouble I give, tell him. Don't tell me, tell him. This is Mr. Kevin Miller. You know him? Yes. You know who his mother be? Yes. You know who his wife be? Yes. All right. This is Mrs. Ramsam Kouj. I can't pronounce her name. I just started it. In the door? Yes. And this is Miss. Miss I almost said this Miss. Is Mr. Edison Lawrence. You know this man? <laughs> His name is Sutherland. Emerson Sutherland. You know this lady? Yes. What's your name? Yes. Okay, you know this lady? Yes. yes. She's Harris. She can't pronounce it Charis. Winston, they are naming Grace. You know the grace of the Lord. 
you know this man? Yes. What's his name? Sean. What for the now answer me? <laughs> his name is Sean Grissett. Do you know who his wife is? Yes. You sure? Yes. Come, Mrs. Grissett, stand up and let's see you. <laughs> I know they know Mrs. Hines because she is here and we never, oh sorry, we miss out this one. Miss Karen, stand up and let's see you. <laughs> you know this lady? Dorna Lee. Summer, right? Yes. Like the fish was swim upstream. And this gentleman here, you know, must know him because he won the back. <laughs> this is Mr. Carlton Gary. Right? And this lady here, everybody knows she because anything drop down and she calls it. <laughs> This is Cheddar. Anything drop down and she comes because she never do it. And this is Claudette slowly. We know how to introduce she comes. Everybody know her. All when she walks peace and they say, you know you want to do the want to do the projection, you want to go to the cameraman. <laughs> Mr. Carr, that's not nice. That's not neighbor. <laughs> so we are going to come to shot them, miss. You have to stand up on here, so. <laughs> Not here, so no. If they cannot see us, stop and up, they must come at church. <laughs> so, I'm going to ask the former rector's warden to present them. And uh, I'm also going to use this opportunity because the last time I stand here, we were not online. So, Mr. Brown, I'd like to thank you, sir. I will say thank you, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> For your service to the church and for your continued. Bishop 
the priest in charge and all the designated authority of the church, keeping the canons, the prayer book, and Bible above self, we, we will. will. Let us pray. Oh God, our loving Heavenly Father, we give you humble and hearty thanks for all. Let me start again. Thank you, Mrs. Chella. You see if anything falls out of your heart. Oh God, our loving eternal Heavenly Father, we give you humble and hearty thanks for all your many blessings. We thank you for these Christian people elected to serve as church wardens and church committee members of this church, St. Matthews, in this diocese of the Lima and the Cayman Islands. Send your continued blessing upon their lives that they may truly serve you and the people committed to their charge. Keep them, O oh Lord, from sin, Satan, and the worldly lusts. Sanctify them with your Holy Spirit and make them a blessing to all whom they need. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior, Lord. Amen. In the interest of time, Mr. Edison Hines, Rector's Warden, Mr. Carlton Darren, Treasurer, Miss Harris Winstanley, Secretary, I admit you in the name of the living God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. We would shake hands here, but COVID stop that. Mr. Kevin Miller. Mrs. Ramson Lynch, Mr. Sutherland, Mrs. Francis, Miss Snowy, Miss Summer, Miss Abuki, Mrs. Cheddar, and who are you? Miss Peach. No man. She she's official enough. She is in charge. Let me start over. Mr. Miller. Mr. Ram Mrs. Ramsam Mose, Mr. Sutherland, Mrs. Francis, Miss Snowley, Mr. Grissich, Miss Salmon, Mrs. Cheddar, I admit you as members of the church committee of St. Matthew's, the St. Matthew's Santa Cruz Church, in the name of the living God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you all. Can you clap there? Church and 
for the unity of all people. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our bishops, Archbishop Owen, Bishop Leon, retired Bishop Harold and Robert, and all ministers of God's word and sacrament, Hilda, Robin, Barrington, and Teddy, that they may be filled with truth and love, and be found without fault at the Lord's coming. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the leaders of the nation, Patrick, the Governor General, Andrew, the Prime Minister, Mark, the leader of the opposition, and for those in authority among us, that they may serve justice and promote the freedom and dignity of all people. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the victims of Tonga, fear, injustice, and oppression, especially Ethiopia, and for all who labor in the cause of human liberation and fulfillment, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all the sick, especially members of our congregation, the suffering, the sorrowful, and the dying, and for all who remember and care for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For deliverance from the ravages of hurricane, earthquake, drought, or flood, and for a just and proper use of God's creation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For ourselves and all who confess the name of Christ, that we may show forth the excellences of him who called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Oh Lord, Using form A, let us therefore confess our sins. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and one another in thought, word, and deed, and in what we have left and done. We are sorry and repent of all our sins. For your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, Forgive us all our trespasses, and grant that we may serve you in the name of God, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you with life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
we are the body of Christ. By the one spirit we were all baptized into one body and have all been made to drink of the one spirit. Let us then pursue the things that make for peace and build up the common life. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you.
are so unbelievable. Father, we offer you these gifts that you have given us. This bread, this wine, this money.
after supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me.
element of love which we need to express deeper and restore in peaceful unity. As we participate in the Eucharist, let us become who we say we are. The gifts of God for the people of God. Our souls will peace and be satisfied, and we will sing glad songs of praise to Him.
It is no longer I who live in Christ, live, but Christ who lives in us. Members this morning, I have to, before I welcome, I have to say, Hallelujah. Hallelujah, that's how I felt this morning. Amen. Worship. Worship of the arms. I 
Christmas this morning. St. Andrew's Church, Gilnock, invite you all to its yard sale. Saturday, February 12th, at St. Matthew's Anglican Church, Main Street, Santa Cruz, St. Lisbeth. They'll have on sale pots, spoons, forks, knives, tools, colognes, clothes, plates, etc., etc. They have a number here for pre-order if you have anything to want. But I guess this um, goes with the bungu soup. They said they'll be selling bungu soup. You shouldn't cook on Saturday. Come and enjoy their bungu soup. It's from time 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. That's it, sir. That's it, sir. That's it, sir. February 12th. That's Saturday. Okay. Um, those who are celebrating birthday, we wish for them God's blessing and long life. February 6th, we have Mrs. Longman, Don Longman, Miss Monica Platt. Do you know Monica, by the way? Yes, she's over there with her daughter and granddaughter. Grandson, sorry, grandson. We have Eunice Morgan on the eighth, on the ninth, Brazil Wright, on the twelfth, Monica Maxine Lynch, Dockery, and Lloyd Mushe. Can we do a happy birthday song? <laughs> So 
and the fast in it will keep us in your prayer. Kind members of the church commission, please cease for 35 minutes of the church meeting. Thank you. The recessional. The recessional hymns, 770. All right, my songs and the music.